Hello, children of God. Have you ever been asked to do something that seemed very difficult? Maybe something that seemed almost impossible? Well, we all face situations in our lives that are challenging. Let's say, for instance, I gave you a challenge. If I asked you to multiply 845 times 976, do you think you could do it? Well, maybe not in your head right away. I mean, possibly with a paper and a pencil, or better yet, how about with handy dandy calculator? So, if I use my tool, I can do this pretty quickly. 800, let's see, 895 times 976. Is that what I said? We'll go with that. Well, there you have it. It's 873,000. 520. So knowing the right tools to use and having some help certainly made that happen a lot quicker than trying to figure it out on my own or in my head or even with paper and pencil. Well, here's another strange challenge for you. Let's say I have some water here. Now, I would like you to separate this pepper and make it spread to the sides of the container. Do you think you could do that? Let's see. If I kind of swirl, spread it out. Doesn't really separate it very well, does it? It kind of wants to cluster together. Hmm, now what if I use a little more pepper? How about if I try it with a special tool? Well, you look at that. The pepper just spreads right out and separates. That's pretty interesting. Almost feels like magic, but it's not magic. It's a little science tool I call dish soap. And when I put a little drop of it on my finger, it makes it so that the pepper moves away from it. It involves chemistry and molecules and, well, we don't need to get into that quite right now, but Today, we're talking about a time when some water separated. It didn't have pepper in it, but it also had to do with a seemingly impossible task. Sometimes it's about knowing how to do something or knowing the tools to use or knowing who can make things happen. See, our story today has to do once again with Moses. Yes, the baby in the basket who met God in the burning bush and then had the people do the whole Passover thing. And well, finally, they were on their way out of Egypt and they were running away. God was with them and protecting them every day and every night. He was still with them. But Pharaoh changed his mind. See, Pharaoh had said, yeah, go on, get out of here. I don't want to see you anymore. And then he got to thinking about it and he went, wait, that's all my free labor source. Where are they going? Get them back. So Pharaoh started to chase God's people, the Israelites. And his chariots were getting closer and closer and they came to the Red Sea, a big body of water. It wasn't actually red, it was called the Red Sea, but they got there and they went, well, what do we do now? And the people started complaining to Moses. They said, you brought us out here. Look, we're just going to die anyway. What's wrong? And God told Moses to trust him. And Moses went out and God separated the water. He parted that whole sea so that there was just water on each side and dry land in the middle. And the Israelites, well, they started to cross it. Moses said, come on, let's go. And it must have been a little scary, but they had to trust him. They had to most of all trust God. And so they started crossing this sea. Now it took a long time. There were a lot of people and it was a pretty big body of water. And they were crossing the sea. And then along came Pharaoh's chariots behind them. Well, finally, all of Moses' people made it across on dry land. And they looked and Pharaoh's people were still trying to pursue them. They were getting a little bit stuck in the mud because of all that water that had been there. 
but they were still going. Well then, once all of the Israelites were across, God made the waters come back. They splashed down, and Pharaoh and his army were gone. God protected his people. He protects us, and he cares for us, and he can make the impossible possible. Those people probably thought, and maybe even Moses thought, there is no way we're going to get across this water. We don't have a boat. We don't have a bridge. How is this happening? This is impossible. But God makes the impossible possible. He can and will do anything. And he was able to part those waters just as easy as can be and lead his people across. And he leads us too. We might not always know or understand what's happening or how to make it happen. Sometimes we might feel like we're facing something that's impossible or something that's really, really hard. And we don't know what to do or how to handle it. But we know who does. And we can pray. We can always ask God for his help. And he is there with us. He protects us. He leads us. He guides us. And he can help us do what we think we can't. Well, we can't do it on our own. We can do nothing on our own. But with him, we can do anything and everything. And he will always be with us. So why don't we say a prayer now and thank God for always protecting us, for caring for us, loving us, and guiding us in our lives. Dear God, thank you for always being with us. Help us to trust in you and to turn to you when life is really tough. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Lean on him. Anything is possible. If he can part the Red Sea, he will lead you and me. And hopefully, this is one more way that you can share this remarkable and important story with your ministry, wherever and with whomever it might be. Now, go make some disciples and have a wonderful week. See you next time.